words. Okay, so my name is Johannes. I'm part of. It's really awful, or? I don't know. Okay, ah, better, better. Okay,、uh, my name is Johannes. I'm part. No. No. I'll just ignore it. I'll just ignore it. Okay, part of Monochrome, and、uh, we were really proud uh, uh, when、uh, the CCC approached us and invited us to、uh, give a lecture about a couple of our projects and stuff we do. And、uh, we thought a long time about, ah, yeah, that's something maybe interesting for the U.S. American、uh, citizens in here. We the people under construction. Okay, good.、Uh, But skip that. We are in Germany. Okay, so we thought a long time about possible titles for today's、uh, talk, and then we thought maybe we call it "No Power for Theory and/or Practice." And we thought, no, no, lots of practice here. Let's go to a different title. Let's call it "There's Something Rotten in the State of Argentina." And we thought, far away and.、Uh, Talking about liberalism all the time, so maybe another title. Maybe I never promised your Roswell report. We thought maybe we have a couple of like segments here interested in that.、Mm, maybe that's not a good title, a title either. Or entropy in the UK. I think that's something that could be like new kind of movement. Or new German dark wavers. We're gonna find you. And I'm sure. Or Jesus loves you more than you will know. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, we found our Jesus. He had a talk yesterday, Mr. Lessig. You know,、um, uh, Lessig is Lessig. Yeah. Uh, uh, upon, <coughs> Although I'm not completely sure about his like ideological background because. Lessig is nice, but he's a liberal, and I could consider myself a leftist. So, not, like the concept of freedom that he's talking about, I think it's not the same concept of freedom that I'm talking about. But whatever. Okay, let's go to the next possible title. We are great together, the liberal society and its enemies, and that may fit for Mr. Lessig too. Okay,、uh, good.、Uh, we are here at a hacker congress, so we thought presenting ourselves in a proper way.、Uh, so we made a. Render image with nice bubbles and stuff like that. A、uh, couple of our、uh, team members, but today I'd like to talk not about ourselves and who we are, but why we're doing our stuff and about a couple of projects that we did、uh, in the past time. And it was really interesting that、uh, I think it was a year or two ago,、uh, a journalist, you know, journalists, a journalist called us context hackers. And that's maybe one of the reasons why the CCC invited us, because we are into context, co let's call it context hacking. Okay, and I'd like to、uh, tell you a short story about a program, a project, an intervention that happened、uh, a couple of years ago.、Uh, and the pre-story for that is that、uh, we at Monochrome、uh, were invited.、Uh, To be the official Austrian national representatives at the Biennial in São Paulo in Brazil. So you have to know if you're not totally familiar with the art context. We aren't either. Uh, the, uh, there are a big, big, big art uh, events uh, in the world.、Uh, like number one is the Venice、uh, Biennial. The second one would probably be the Documenta in Kassel, Germany, and.、Uh, The third is actually the Biennale in São Paulo. That are like big art, super mega structures with hundreds and millions of dollars and people and whatever. They are really big, and it was really interesting because、uh, in the year 2000 there was in Austria, and we are from Austria,、uh, a neoliberal shift. Let's call it because in the year 2000、uh, there was、uh, a new coalition between the conservatives and the right wing or far right wing Freedom Party. So there was a change、uh, in the Austrian、uh, political system in 2000, and just a year later, we were invited to go to Brazil to the Biennial to represent this like tiny little racist thing called Austria、uh, in Brazil. Okay, so、uh, we had a little a bit of a problem with that. It was really a nice gesture to invite us because actually,、uh, of course, not、uh, the government or like an. Government art institution invited us, but the government art institution invited 
uh, a curator, and the curator invited us. That's the way it works. Okay. So, and we thought, actually, we don't want to represent Austria there. We have a really big problem going there, like just a year or a year and a half after the big, like, uh, black and blue coalition uh, starting to Brazil. But we thought a little bit about what we could do there. And we had uh, the idea of not going ourselves as monochrome, but to send somebody else there. So somebody else should do our job. And then we thought, who could do it? And then we came uh, uh, in contact with a really nice uh, artist called uh, Georg Paul Thoman. Georg Paul Thoman, he was 57 years uh, back then, in 2001, 2002. Uh, big Austrian uh, art artist doing stuff for like a couple of years, uh, rather famous, I don't know, uh, but we decided it would be a nice statement not going like a young, young urban uh, fashionable art group going there, but like a 57-year-old uh, artist called Georg Paul Thoman. Fuck it! There's the fucking Austrian pirate party, they're all the time Skyping with me. But actually, a couple of them are sitting there. Thank you, Austrian pirate party, for the Skype chest. Okay. Uh, if it should... Ah, come on, I have to stop it. Oh, shit. Who oh, fuck is using Windows? Ah, where is it? There it is. Hey, I've been wieder zurück, yeah, Ekela. Sehr gut. Yeah, okay, good. Tata, modern technology. Okay, we uh, uh, wanted to send Georg Paul Thoman to the Biennial. Uh, and uh, the interesting part about Georg Paul Thoman is uh, that Georg Paul Thoman doesn't exist. So, we invented him. We wrote his biography. It's about 500 pages of uh, text with lots of pictures and things he did in the 60s and 70s. He worked together with Survival Research Lab. He wrote the first Austrian uh, cyberpunk story in 1982. He did whatever, a couple of things. He, whatever. I uh, hand you over. It's in uh, German and English. You can flip it. Uh, so most of the time, we like, sat there for six months and creating this like, art avatar called Georg Paul Thoman, where he was, what he did. And it was a really nice, let's call it, probe into uh, art and society because the, this like long, long uh, biography is a good way to deal with the last 40 years of pop uh, history, art history, societal history, and stuff like that. We crammed everything together into this person called Georg Paul Thoman and the good part was uh, nobody really realized it because I think maybe Google wasn't that um, great four years ago, but nobody really did research about Georg Paul Thoman, and all the newspapers published articles about him and said that Georg Paul Thoman would go to the uh, biennial and stuff like that, and uh, whatever. <laughs> and uh, so uh, it was really interesting that uh, even in Austria, a few people realized that Georg Paul Thoman doesn't exist or exists in a really strange way. And of course, in Brazil, I mean, like big uh, art, uh, art uh, fair with hundreds of artists and stuff like that, who would care about Georg Paul Thoman? So basically, we were his technical support team, and Georg Paul Thoman looked like that, okay? <laughs> That's Georg Paul Thoman. Actually, it's one of his artworks. It's called Material Study with Scanned Photo of Self in a Beer Mood and Photoshop Crystallization Filter, okay? <laughs> uh, we... So, uh, and many people uh, in uh, Brazil uh, at the Biennial asked us, oh, where, where is Georg Paul Thoman? Why don't I do an interview with him? I want to meet him again. I think I met him like five years ago there and there, and blah, 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 blah. So, where is Georg Paul Thoman? And we said, okay, he's sitting uh, yeah, in his hotel uh, room and watching porn movies, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we are just his technical support team. We are just setting up his fucking his exhibition. It's pure crap. What, what do you want? Like, call the hotel and ask for Georg Paul Thoman, okay? A couple of people actually did that. Uh, uh, the good part was because we were not really the artists there, we were just a technical support team. We were like the bottom line of the hierarchy at the big art institution because you have like the administration and the top curators and the normal curators, regular curators. You have the top artists and the regular artists and somewhere down there is a technical support team and of course, of course the art guides. So actually the really important 
people walking around and explaining to people what's happening here. Yeah? So that's the bottom of the hierarchy in big art uh, fairs like that. So we, of course, uh, had good friends with all the other technical support teams and the other uh, art, and the art guides, and we uh, basically told them, here, Paul Thoman, you know, it doesn't exist. It's just fake. We do it out of political reasons and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, uh, but we don't tell you what to tell the people. So we tell you the story, and you can decide whatever story you want to tell them. You can to tell them it's fake, you can to tell them different stories about the Paul Thoman, whatever. The good part was a big rumor bubble started. It was like a geyser of rumors. Where is Thoman? Here, there, blah, blah, and he's blah, 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 okay? Uh, uh, one nice anecdote was that we actually wanted to get our, our catalogs. So we went to this clerk there and said, okay, uh, we need the art catalogs with uh, the title and all the stuff uh, for, uh, uh, for Georg Paul Thoman. And he said, okay, no, uh, problem is only the artist himself, Georg Paul Thoman, can get his catalogs. And we said, no, 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 Georg Paul Thoman doesn't exist. We, we invented him. He's a fake, okay? And he said, <laughs> Come on, you just want to get free catalogs. Fuck off, okay? Uh, so actually, our, our curator had to go there and get our catalogs for us. And there were many, many, many uh, interesting uh, stories and anecdotes about Georg Paul Thoman and his lives and, lives and times uh, uh, in Brazil. But a really special one I want to uh, tell you right now. Just a couple of white cubes next to our white cube, because uh, big art... Uh, Fairs are like small white cubes, like beehives. Beehive, 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 beehive. And uh, they're actually not talking to each other. It's like, you know, artists, individualism, too, 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 too. They're working for themselves uh, and not talking to any other artists. Uh, in German, there's this really nice uh, term for it. The Warenförmigkeit des Künstlers. So the commodity value of the artist. So, and it was really clear where we live, in what... Uh, uh, society. And just uh, like a couple of uh, spaces next to our beehive was the beehive of Taiwan. It was the beehive of an artist called uh, Chen Chi Chang, and he was a uh, uh, really nice guy, and he did a uh, critical uh, um, installation about Taiwan and the uh, and uh, asylums uh, in Taiwan. They were like really like uh, inhumane, inhumane uh, stuff happening there, and he did a photo story about inmates in asylums in Taiwan. So his, uh, the outside of his cube was Chen Chi Chang, uh, Taiwan. As the outside of our cube read uh, uh, Georg Paul Thoman, Austria. There were ad adhesive letters on the outside of the white cubes. Okay, but just a couple of two or three days before the opening of the biennial, uh, his, uh, the name tag uh, Taiwan was removed from the outside of his white cube. So there was not Chen Chi Chang Taiwan, but suddenly there was Chen Chi Chang Taipei Museum of Fine Arts. And he was really upset about that because he was invited as the uh, Taiwanese representative for a year, uh, and uh, he wanted to find out what happened, so he called the administration and he didn't want to talk to him. He tried to talk to his curator, and the curator tried to talk to the administration. They didn't want to talk to him either. So there was big trouble ahead, and, and he was really pissed about the situation because nobody tried to communicate with him. Uh, and he wrote an open letter to the other artists and asking them if they knew something, uh, what happened, why is he not Taiwan but Taipei Museum of Fine Art. And we got this letter and did a little bit of research and we found out uh, that uh, China had uh, intervened. Because, you know, one China policy, there is no thing called Taiwan because Taiwan is still part of China. So the Chinese uh, delegation, the Chinese artists, had protested against that, and they said, okay, uh, if Taiwan has an, uh, like a known national representation there, we will we'll, uh, basically leave the biennial, and we make like big diplomatic trouble. So they said, okay, yeah, big China, small Taiwan, okay, let's remove the name tag Taiwan, just replace it by the name of his museum, and nobody will realize it's not a problem, so er everyone is happy. Okay, and we thought, okay, come on, uh, What's happening here? And then we thought uh, we have to do some kind of a solidarity campaign, let's call it that way. We have to somehow find a way uh, to show our solidari solidarity with this like, really small uh, artist in a big, big political uh, game. Okay? Uh, so, uh, yeah. Basically, that, uh, that's, that's our inst installation. That's Georg Paul Thoman's artwork. It's really beautiful. It's so 1980s. Uh, 